Hey, over there. I'm broke again. Give me more money right now. What? Why do you keep blowing through your money so quickly? Didn't I just transfer your monthly allowance at the beginning of the week? It's only Thursday now, and you've already spent it all? Oh, come on. Stop nagging me. You only give me a measly amount of money. Why do you lecture me all day? Oh, what? Is that your money? No, of course it isn't. You're just a housewife with no talent. You make no money. That is my brother's money. I only rely on him, and he earns money to let me spend it. But now, when I want to get more, you dare to question me and lecture me? Well, before you call me useless, maybe you should take a long, hard look at yourself first. You've been unemployed for three whole years, even before I married your brother. Why can't you find a job? And don't forget, I may not work in an office like your brother, but I still make money as a freelancer, writing articles for cooking magazines and selling cakes online. So be careful with your words before criticizing others. Hey, useless! How much do you think they pay for those kind of jobs? Maybe it's not even enough to pay for a shoe of mine. <laughs> So how dare you criticize me like that? I'm always trying to find a job, but it's because those stupid companies don't recognize my talent. How can you blame me when it's your fault for sabotaging my interviews time and time again? What? What on earth are you talking about? How can you blame me so unreasonably? Oh, uh, do you remember that interview I was supposed to attend yesterday? I specifically asked you to wake me up at 6 o'clock because I had an interview at 8 a.m. You barged into my room, turned off my alarm, threw my phone across the room, and put me back to sleep. When I finally opened my eyes, it was already 11 a.m. What a load of rubbish. I didn't wake you up. How can you make up such a blatant lie? Obviously, I went into your room to wake you up so many times. But when I entered your room at 7, you went ballistic. You threw pillows and anything else within reach at me, hurling insults and kicking me out. And just as I was leaving, your phone started ringing. So you snatched it and flung it at me, sending it flying. Enough with your lies. I would never behave that way. If you want to know the truth, go ahead and ask your brother. He was present when you were screaming and witnessed you hurling the phone at me. He became furious and instructed me to back off to let you take responsibility for your own actions. And let's not forget your personality. If it were true that I was ignoring you, wouldn't you simply leave it be instead of running to tattle to our mother-in-law? Oh, you think you're so clever. Are you still arguing with me now? So how do you explain setting a trap to tempt me into eating a spoiled cake that caused stomach aches and diarrhea preventing me from attending last week's interview? What about that incident? You deliberately took the cake I made for the guests and decided to eat it on your own, didn't you? I had briefly stepped out to purchase an ingredient for my cupcake and upon my return, I noticed one cupcake missing. When I confronted you about it, you had the audacity to claim that the cake I made was terrible and that you hadn't laid a finger on it. And now, out of nowhere, you accuse me of intentionally causing your stomach issues through the cake. I had a stomach ache at that time, so I couldn't fully hear what you said. I answered without thinking, but why didn't you leave a note informing me that the cake was reserved for a customer. And if it was indeed meant for a customer, why did I end up suffering from diarrhea? Are you trying to poison your customers? Oh, I see. Aren't you allergic to coconuts? The cupcake you ate had a coconut flavor, but since my client didn't want too much coconut milk and preferred fresh coconut, I only used a small amount. Perhaps you didn't even notice it. What? Don't you always sprinkle shredded coconut on top of the frosting? Why didn't you do it that time? Because I ran out of shredded coconut at home and I had to go out to buy more. But when I returned, you had already eaten it. And since you denied eating it, I didn't think to warn you about it either. It's all your fault in the end. Enough talking. Give me the money right now. No, absolutely not. I'm not an ATM. What? How dare you treat me this way? I am your husband's sister. You have no right to deny me. It's your responsibility to cater to my every need. Firstly, you are not my mother, so you have no right to force me to provide for you like that. Even if you were my mother, I would do things for you because I want to, not because I'm being forced. Secondly, why should I provide for someone who doesn't even bother to know my name and disrespects me by calling me hey or useless? I've been calling you like that for the past six months since you became a sister-in-law. Wasn't it okay? You're making a big deal out of it. It's because I have realized that the more I tolerate your behavior, the more you mistreat me. Do you believe I'm afraid of you and won't stand up for myself? So from now on, if you can't address me affectionately as sister-in-law, at least have the decency to call me by my name. In case you've forgotten, my name is Caroline. And if you refuse to call me by my name, I will simply ignore you. Huh? How dare you tell me what to do? Remember, this is my brother's house. You're just a maid. You have to do whatever I say. Hey you, answer me now! Hey over there! 
transfer the money right now. I need it urgently to buy clothes for my upcoming interview. Hey you, old hag, are you deliberately ignoring me? <laughs> How long are you planning to play this game? It's been three days and you haven't uttered a single word to me. If I hadn't run out of money today, I wouldn't have even bothered texting you. Fine, fine, you win. Caroline, answer me. Oh, it's you, Everly. I didn't recognize you until you called my name. What's going on? What else could it be? I need you to transfer money to me. I thought you had loads of cash since you were always bragging about your job selling those pathetic, low-quality cakes. I never expected that. Just with a few swipes, the money would be gone. Your bank card now is just a useless thing. Just like you. What? Which bank card are you talking about? Did I ever give you a card? It's the bank card you kept in the jewelry box. Yesterday, when I was in your room, I accidentally knocked over the box and the card fell out. And since I needed money and you refused to give it to me, I took it. Are you referring to the blue bank card? Goodness gracious, did you really spend all the money on that card? How could you be so reckless? Taking someone else's bank card without their permission? Do you even know whose card it is? I know it's yours. <laughs> Your name is right there on the card. But don't pin the blame on me. If you had just willingly given me the money, I wouldn't have resorted to this. After all, you're my sister-in-law. <laughs> I never expected you to be so stingy with such a small amount of money. Oh my god, what on earth did you buy to blow through all that money? Do you realize that if you keep spending, your brother will be absolutely furious? Oh no, this time I didn't spend the money on frivolous things. I only purchased essential items to enhance my personal brand and create an impressive image for my interviews. And who knows? Maybe a director from a prestigious company will notice me and want to date me. <laughs> then I won't have to work hard anymore and I can live a life of luxury. Wow, your imagination knows no bounds. But listen up, Everly. This is no laughing matter. What in the world did you buy that required spending thousands of dollars? I don't think it's necessary to spend that much for an interview. Let me enlighten you. I needed a laptop for my work and I refused to settle for a used or cheap one that would break down quickly. So I splurged on the latest MacBook costing a whopping $2,500. And then there was the matter of makeup. I couldn't risk using cheap products that would irritate my skin and cause breakouts. I had to invest in high-end cosmetics amounting to an additional $1,000. Oh, and of course, I couldn't possibly attempt the interview wearing cheap, shoddy clothes. No, I had to get myself a stylish attire, adding another $1,000 to the bill. But just as I was about to use the card to buy some jewelry, I discovered there were insufficient funds. It was infuriating beyond words. Are you out of your mind? Spending $2,000 on clothes, makeup, and jewelry? Do you think this is some kind of endless shopping spree? Oh, please, it's just for one month. Don't you understand the importance of appearance in today's cutthroat job market? Companies judge you based on your looks alone. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Well, it's not surprising since you've been nothing but a stay-at-home housewife. You have no idea how competitive it is out there. Let me educate you. Employers only hire attractive people. If I show up to an interview looking ugly without makeup and in outdated clothes, I won't stand a chance. But it's all your fault. Your wardrobe is filled with outdated countryside clothes that are a complete embarrassment. I had no choice but to buy new ones. Hold on a second. Are you telling me that you've been snooping around in my room? Excuse me? This is my brother's house, not yours. You have no right to question my actions. And just to be clear, everything in this house belongs to my brother. As his beloved and obedient sister, I can do whatever I please. Yes, you have the freedom to roam around the house, but my bedroom is off limits. I can't believe your audacity. And let me remind you, it's not just about invading my privacy in the bedroom. You constantly help yourself to my cosmetics in the bathroom without permission. You leave spills and never bother to clean up after. To avoid conflict, I had to bring my cosmetics into my bedroom, hoping you would understand the basic concept of respecting others. But clearly, that was too much to ask. What? Are you insinuating that because I share DNA with your mother-in-law, I am uneducated, unintelligent, unethical, and promiscuous? How dare you? You deceitful daughter-in-law. I will not stand for this. I will make sure my mother knows how you've been disrespecting her. And let me give you a chance to redeem yourself. Transfer the money to me so I can continue my shopping spree, and maybe I'll consider forgetting about your outrageous behavior. How does that sound? It's a fair trade, right? <laughs> 
Oh, you think you can threaten me by telling my mother-in-law? Fine, go ahead and tell her. Let's see who she believes when she finds out what you've done. Wanna bet on it? What are you talking about? My mother will always take my side over an outsider like you. How dare you think she'll side with you? Well, let me enlighten you. You've been spending all the money on my mother's bank card. What? I haven't spent my mother's money. Oh, really? Take a good look at the name on the bank card you're holding. Are you trying to intimidate me? Oh, look at this. It clearly says... Caroline L. Collins, that's your name, isn't it? You conveniently forgot that both your mother and I share the same name, Caroline. After I got married, I changed my last name to Collins. My name is Caroline Collins, but your mother's full name is Caroline Lee Collins. Wait, are you saying this is my mother's card? How is that even possible? Why were you keeping my mother's bank card without my knowledge? Why didn't you tell me? When my parents-in-law visited last time, mom accidentally dropped her bank card under the sofa. She realized it after she went home and asked me to find it. I was planning to return it to her, but mom was concerned about it getting lost, so she asked me to keep it safe until her next visit. So, I hid it under the jewelry box in the deepest drawer. But I never expected you to invade my privacy and rummage through my belongings. Besides, I did mention that you should check your own bank card already. No, this can't be happening. If my mother finds out I've been spending all her money, she'll disown me and kick me out. You have to help me, Caroline. You can't let your husband's sister end up on the streets. If that's the case, why don't you return the items you bought and explain the situation to the stores? Maybe they'll be understanding. No, I can't return them. The labels were removed right after I made the purchases. The store won't accept them without the original labels. Well, it seems I can't help you with that. As you mentioned before, I'm just a housewife without any income. How do you expect me to come up with $5,000 to repay you? Well, in that case, you have to lie for me. Tell her that you borrowed money to help a friend in need. Say it was a personal matter and you didn't want to burden anyone with the details. Come on, Caroline, help me out here. Oh, that's a good idea. But unfortunately, you're late. My mother-in-law just called and asked why she received a message with a deduction from the bank. And since you didn't say anything, I told her the truth. What? Did you tell my mother the truth? Oh no, she will definitely kill me. You have to do something to save me. No, Everly, I can't lie for you. That won't solve anything. It's time for you to face the consequences of your actions and learn from your mistakes. No, this can't be happening. My mother has been calling and texting nonstop. I can't avoid her forever. What am I supposed to do? You need to face her and explain everything. Take responsibility for your actions. It's the only way to start making things right, Everly. Hello, Caroline. Are you busy right now? Can we talk for a while? Um, yeah. Are you really Everly? Of course, this is me. Why are you asking me such a strange question? It's just that I find it a bit strange that you're surprisingly polite like this. I finally realized what a mess I'd made after my mother gave me an entire week of non-stop lectures and scoldings. She made it clear that I had brought shame upon the family and that I needed to be punished. So, how did you manage to deal with the money you irresponsibly spent? My mother decided to make it my debt, my burden to bear. She told me that I would have to find a job and work tirelessly to earn money back and repay every single penny I spent. She made it clear that I won't receive any help or support from her or my brother until I had fully paid off my debt. That's a harsh but necessary consequence for your actions. It's time for you to face the consequences of your reckless behavior and learn the value of hard work and responsibility. You know what, Caroline? I've been thinking a lot about how I treated you in the past and I feel awful about it. I didn't realize how nice you were to me and I took it all for granted. I want to say sorry. Sincerely. I appreciate your apology, Everly, but I still have my doubts. It's not easy to forget how hurtful things were. Please, Caroline, give me a chance. I genuinely want to make things right. I'm, I'm really sorry for the way I treated you. I didn't see how wonderful you were until now. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? It will take time for me to fully trust you again, Everly. I need to see consistent change and effort from you. I understand, Caroline. I'm willing to work hard to rebuild our relationship. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And, um, I want to start by calling you my sister-in-law. It feels more personal and shows that I truly respect you. That means a lot, Everly. I'm open to giving our relationship another chance. Let's take it one step at a time. Absolutely. Now, enough about the past. I'm really craving one of your amazing cupcakes. Can you make one for me, pretty please? Of course. What flavor would you like? I really want a chocolate chip cupcake. The combination of chocolate and those gooey chips, just irresistible. 
Hmm, here's the thing. I actually ran out of chocolate. Can we go with a different flavor? No way, it has to be chocolate. I've been dreaming about it for days. All right, no problem. I'll hop in the car and go grab some chocolate for you. Hold on tight, I'll be back in a jiffy. Yay! <laughs> You're the best, Caroline. Hurry back with that chocolate so that I can finally satisfy my craving. Make sure that you drive because I can't wait. Urgent news, Everly. There won't be any cupcakes today. It's an emergency. Your brother was in a car accident and is currently in the hospital. What? How, 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 how did that happen? Is he okay? Why was he in an accident and not you, Caroline? What are you implying, Everly? Accidents can happen to anyone. I wasn't involved in this incident. I can't believe you would suggest such a thing. I'm sorry, Caroline. I didn't mean it that way. I'm just worried about my brother. Tell me what happened to him. Everly, this morning, as I was about to go out and buy chocolate chips for your cupcakes, Luis had just returned from a walk in the park with our dog. He offered to run the errand on my behalf. Since his car was at the repair shop, Luis took my car to go shopping. But after just 10 minutes, I received a call from the hospital. Louise had been in a car accident and I rushed there immediately. How is my brother doing, Caroline? Is he okay? When I arrived at the hospital, Luis was unconscious and had suffered a head injury. The doctors are doing everything they can to stabilize him and assess the extent of his injuries. I'm waiting for updates from the medical staff. I can't believe this happened. Are you sure it was Luis who took your car? Um, of course, Everly. He offered to help me. I didn't expect anything like this to happen. Ah, oh, this is all your fault, Caroline. If you had just gone to buy chocolate chips yourself instead of relying on Luis, none of this would have happened. It's because of you that Luis is in this situation. I don't understand why you're blaming me, Everly. Luis insisted on going to buy the chocolate chips himself. I didn't ask him to do it. I never expected anything like this to happen. Blaming me won't change the circumstances. I can't believe you're defending yourself. Luis is my brother, and he's in the hospital because of you. I won't forgive you for this. Everly, I understand you're upset, but I didn't cause the accident. It was an unfortunate accident, and the police are currently investigating the incident. They will determine whose fault it is. Wait, why are the police involved. Caroline, what's going on? It's because of the accident, Everly. Luis was involved in a car accident and a patrol car happened to pass by and called an ambulance for him. Before he fell into a coma, Luis managed to tell him that the brakes weren't working. It's really strange because I've recently had my car serviced, including the brakes, just two days ago. I take good care of my car, so it's highly unlikely that the brakes would suddenly fail like that. The police suspect foul play, that someone intentionally tampered with the brakes to cause harm to me. So they're conducting an investigation. Come on, Caroline. Maybe it was just a minor accident. I think you're exaggerating things. Why did you have to involve the police and start an investigation? Can we just drop it? Everly, why are you so alarmed at the mention of the police? Is there something you're not telling me? Well, I think cutting off the brakes might have been some kind of prank. No one has to lose their lives over it. It's not that serious. So let's not complicate things further. Wait a minute, Everly. I don't understand why you've suddenly changed your attitude. Just a moment ago, you were angrily scolding me, blaming me for Luis's accident, and now you're dismissing it as a trivial matter. What's going on? Look, Caroline, I was upset earlier and I said some things out of anger. But now I think, thinking about it calmly, I don't believe someone would intentionally harm you or cause such a dangerous situation. Let's just move on from this and focus on supporting Luis's recovery. Everly, do you really think this was just a harmless joke? Luis crashed into a pole, and if it weren't for the protective air cushion, he could have been seriously injured, or worse. I can't just let it go as if nothing happened. But Lewis is okay now, right? I think we should just move on from this and not talk about it anymore. Everly, is that why you're trying to downplay the severity of the situation? Are you afraid that the police will find out that you were the one who tampered with the brakes to harm me? What? How dare you accuse me of such things? You're just making up stories because you hate me. Everly, the police have made significant progress in their investigation. They checked the security camera footage from my neighbor's house. It captured a suspicious girl lurking around while my husband and I were away, and she was seen carrying tools. The camera even caught her face clearly. The police are bringing the video to me for identification, and it's you! They suspect you and will further investigate your involvement. This is ridiculous. I would never do something like that. Caroline, I just came to my brother's house. There's nothing illegal about that. I have every right to be here. 
here. You can't just accuse me without any proof. I can't believe you stoop so low and try to frame me. Everly, the evidence is pointing toward you. The police are taking this matter seriously, and they will conduct a thorough investigation. If you are innocent, then you have nothing to worry about. But if you're responsible, you need to face the consequences of your actions. Caroline, I'm sorry. I confess it was me who tampered with the brakes, but it was just supposed to be a prank. I didn't expect things to go to spar. I was angry because you reported me to my mother, and I wanted to scare you a little. I never meant for anyone to get hurt. You did what? Caroline, please, I beg you for your forgiveness. I never thought it would escalate to this point. I'm scared and deeply regret what I did. I understand now the gravity of my actions, and I'm truly sorry. Everly, what you did was dangerous and irresponsible. It's not something that can be brushed off as a mere prank. Louise could have been seriously injured or worse. I can't simply forgive you for putting his life at risk. Furthermore, Louise himself wants you to take responsibility for your actions. He's hurt and disappointed, and he believes that you need to face the consequences of your behavior. I didn't realize the impact of my actions at the time, but I promise I will do whatever it takes to make amends and show that I've changed. Please, Caroline, give me a chance to make things right. Caroline, please don't give up on me. My dear sister-in-law, Caroline! So, let me tell you how everything played out in the end. Everly's actions had serious consequences, and the law didn't take it lightly. She was sentenced to seven long years in prison for her attempt at murder. It was a harsh reality for everyone involved, but justice was served. As the years passed and Everly served her sentence, Luis and I decided to visit her in prison. It wasn't an easy decision, but we wanted to offer her some closure and perhaps find our own sense of peace. When we saw Everly behind those cold steel bars, it was a heartbreaking sight. She looked worn and fragile, a far cry from the fiery and reckless sister-in-law I once knew. As tears streamed down her face, she repeatedly whispered apologies, her voice filled with genuine remorse. Everly's remorse touched us deeply, and we could see the weight of her actions bearing heavily on her soul. It was in that moment that we realized the extent of the pain and regret she carried within her. We held her hands through the cold prison glass, offering a glimmer of compassion in an otherwise bleak environment. She pleaded for forgiveness, her words mingling with her tears. We could sense her genuine desire to make amends, to undo the past and find redemption. It was a profound moment of vulnerability and introspection. In that room, with the weight of her actions laid bare, forgiveness became a possibility. We understood that people can change, that mistakes can be learned from, and that genuine remorse can pave the way for transformation. Meanwhile, Luis and I focused on our own healing and moving forward. We didn't let the darkness of the past consume us. Slowly but surely, Luis recovered from his injuries and we were able to put the accident behind us.